Thanks for joining us for our Dyn 365 Pros Coffee with the Pros. This is an admin or power user focused session intended to explore some um, expanded functionality of Dynamics 365. My name is Erin Karakiewicz. I'm a team member here at Dyn 365 Pros. Uh, we're Silver Microsoft Dynamics 365 partners have been working with Dynamics since the original version. Today's topic specifically is going to be getting started with Power BI. This is a really robust tool, and we want to first delve in with some information about just making the connection and a really simple, straightforward report to get us started. So first, let's take a look at actually making the connection between Power BI and Dynamics 365. It's a really simple and straightforward process. We'll be working with the Power BI desktop solution. And the reason that we'll be doing that is because we need to be doing some advanced data manipulation. And this is where you'll need to access that. Um, you can create and export your files and work with the information um, separately after the fact. but to originally create this, we're going to use Power BI Desktop. You can see that getting started, we are in the customizations area of Dynamics 365. In the customizations area, there's the developer resources link. And here under the instance web API, this is what we will want to be copying and taking this over to Power BI Desktop. So here we are in Power BI Desktop. If you haven't seen this before, you can download it directly from um, the Power BI website, as well as sign up for your free license to get started. In our Getting Data area, we're pointing ourselves to an OData feed. So we can just custom, uh, just paste in this URL that we retrieved from the customizations area. In the initial process, um, a lot of these connections can take a couple of minutes. Things speed up as you start using it. I'm already logged in as um, my user linked to Power BI as well as our instance. Um, if you're not, it'll prompt you for your username and password. Again, this can take a few minutes to load. So you can see now we've retrieved all of our tables from our instance. Um, if you were to scroll down, you'll see, of course, every single table, a ton of information here. For this demonstration, we're going to work with our opportunity table. You can save yourself some work and scrolling just by typing in what you're looking for up here. You'll see also that we have, of course, opportunities, our opportunity close table, um, but we're going to start just with these opportunities. When this table has loaded, you'll see that there's a preview over here. If I were to scroll through, you're going to see that we've got a ton of columns. Um, every single related table as well as field will show up here. So I want to get started by editing this so I'm not working with every single bit of this data to start. So when I clicked Edit, it'll bring up my Query Editor. And this will take a minute again to load everything here. The first thing I want to do with my data is narrow down the amount of columns that we're looking at. Again, just kind of a quick scroll through. You can see that I've got a ton more information that I'm going to want to work with than this table. So I'm going to start just by choosing the columns that I want to work with. You could go in and remove columns if you had you know, a more narrowed down list that you were just looking to get rid of a couple things. But in this case, I'm going to rather pick the columns that I do want to keep. I'm going to unselect everything and just narrow down what I'm looking for. So actual close date information. Um, I'm going to pick some other fields here. So now I have my query narrowed down. Um, I'm picking my value, close date, the step name, my probability, an estimated close date, estimated value, the name, owning user, and parent account ID. So what we'll see now is we've got these two related tables. The owning user is just linking to a record, not particularly helpful for 
creating a report or whatever we're going to be using this for. So what I'll do here is expand this table and it'll pull up the option right away for me to select the columns that I want. So for the user, I just want to take a look at their full name and add that in. So now taking a look at that, you'll see um, it maintains the original table name owning user and then pulls in the full name. I'm going to do the same thing with parent account ID and you would do this with any table that you may need. So we'll just pick the name here of that account and let the query pull in that information as well. So now we've got that as well replacing the table with what I actually need when I'm looking at data. So the next thing that I want to do to make this valuable to me is rename this actual value just isn't particularly aesthetically pleasing when I'm providing this report to other users. So I right clicked right here. And then if you pick rename, it'll quickly just let me rename all of these fields. So if you're following along, I took care of these pretty quickly here. Um, but you can see now I've renamed these as is helpful for all of us. So something helpful to point out here is that on the right, um, Power BI is kind of following along and reminding us of the steps that we've taken. So we picked our source, we worked through our nav navigation, um, we removed columns that we didn't need. I expanded these two tables and I renamed some columns. If at any point you wanted to make some changes, you can do that. Um, the gear icon over here will allow that, or you could just take a look to see what you've done. Now, if I made changes here to any step previous to um, getting to to our last step because this is sequential to what we have done, you would get a warning indicating that it could affect other items that have happened down here. Um, so if I, for example, removed the owning user column or table, um, then this would obviously affect the next steps. So you wanna plan ahead and be sure to strategically work through your steps. Again, this is all tip of the iceberg for Power BI, but we just wanna take a look at a getting started report. So now I can come over and I can close and apply these changes before even loading any of this. So close and apply. And these query changes will take a little while. First it'll go through evaluating and then it will make those changes. So now we're back to working with um, Power BI outside of our query. So we've picked our fields, we've made the adjustments that we needed to to our actual query. So you'll see our fields now have been renamed, um, what we would want to see, what's you know valuable for us. So the first thing that we'll walk through is just creating a couple of different visualizations. So first let's work with the tile. I am going to pull over an account just to grab this into a table. So you can see that I've got my account name. I'd like my opportunity in here. By default, Power BI will try to figure out what type of in information or visualization you're putting together. So without us having to make too many changes or do much work, it's just going to grab the information that I'm looking for and say that this looks like, based on the information I'm pulling in, we're just creating a table here which is correct for this purpose. So we've got this started here as a table. Now you'll see these visualizations over here in our um, menu as well that there are a ton of different things listed here. Um, this is one of the great benefits of Power BI, especially when working with Dynamics 365 because we do have limitations on the chart and report types that we can build in Dynamics, um, but Power BI gives us a lot more options. So getting started, I went ahead and just added this in as a table. Now let's also take a look at a um, pipeline just like we would typically be using um, in our instance of Dynamics 365. So I grabbed pipeline face and I'm gonna pull in my estimated value. 
And first we can see that this created it as a table. But over here is my funnel option. And I changed that and it has created a funnel for us, which is great. However, um, there are a couple different things that I happen to know. One is the status of this is missing. So since we're missing status, I'd like to point out a gotcha here. Power BI is currently not using the actual labels of an option set to work with. What you do get displayed is the actual value rather than the label. So we'd be working with just numbers if um, the status happens to be open. What you will actually see is the number one, two, or three corresponding to whatever your pick list options are. So it is nice to um, know that there are some tools to help us get around this and we'll cover those in the future, but something that is helpful is if you can kind of think through your data without having to make a ton of adjustments to your fields or um, how you're looking at things in Power BI. So a little cheat that I like to use on a funnel is to say that we know that we wouldn't have an actual close date if I was working with open opportunities. So I can pull that through and on my visual level filters, I can say that the actual close date is blank and it would make these adjustments. So now you can see that we've made our modifications to our funnel and that's been updated. So there is a very quick and concise look at creating some visualizations in Power BI. Um, a couple things that we'll start getting into, things like you have a slicer over here, um, a ton of different chart options, and of course, different relationships with different um, opportunity types, as well as pulling in accounts and other tables for Power BI. Our next little session is going to take a look at making modifications to these as well. You see that our dollar amounts aren't there. Um, we'll get into more in-depth formatting as well as publishing these to other users. One last thing that we'll point out, um, of course, you want to save this file anytime you've made updates or changes. So I've, I'm saving this locally for now. And then you can at any time make a refresh to your table by clicking up here. Again, the more data that you have, the longer things like this are going to take. So make changes, work with your actual visualizations and your reports, um, and then go ahead and make a, a refresh while you're taking a look at things. So thanks again for your time and taking a look at getting started with Power BI with us. If you have any questions or want in-depth details on working with Power BI, please feel free to reach out to us at any time. Thank you.